Hello and welcome to uh, another episode of Film Freaks with a Z, the podcast all about movies. Each episode is about a single movie, and we'll get to this episode's movie in a little bit. But first, it's time for the fan vote. Attached to this um, episode is the fan vote on the Discord. The Ferret Nation Discord link is in the description of the Spotify and YouTube versions. And there are four movies that you can choose from to decide our fate. They are Alien, suggested by Kenobi. Uh, The Irishman, suggested by KG Productions. Kung Fu Panda, suggested by Lucy. And Pitch Black, which was uh, suggested by Slap. If you want to vote on any of those movies, uh, like I said, head over to the Discord and select your vote in the Film Freaks section. There will be a poll for the people. Uh, Once again, there is no Twitter version of the poll, so just swing over to the Discord if you so desire. Uh, Let's go ahead and introduce ourselves now before we talk about the movie. I am uh, Yemi the Ferret, and I'm here with... Pretty waffles. Tay Mation. Rave positivity. Uh, how's it going, folks? Going good. It's it goes. a going. It's going. Nine to five this bipolar Ohio weather. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> it was snowing and now it's so crappy. seventy. <laughs> yeah. <Ooh>. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's snow something. again. <laughs> Is that warmer than us even? Let me look. What is the weather? I hate it here. Yeah, we're 67 right now, mm. so you guys are warmer oh. than us. Tay's going to have to move over here. Get no, the fall the okay. heat. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, if... Speaking of following the heat... <laughs> well, not really. No. It was cold the whole oh. time, the whole movie. <laughs> well, <laughs> Tay, go ahead and introduce the movie for us today. <laughs> All right. Uh, my movie was Planes, Trains, and Automobiles, starring uh, John Candy and other people. Steve Martin. Steve Martin? Steve Martin. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, I was say other people. My mind Rude. just went blank, and I was like, I know he's, like, like, I know him, I love him, but I'm like, my mind's blanking, and I don't have it right in front of me yet. Hold on. I wasn't prepared. I forgot I had to do this. <laughs> Well, yes. we're John waiting. <laughs> yeah, I I'm pulling it up still. Give me a sec. <laughs> um, directed and written by John Hughes. Um, Layla Robbins also was in it, as well as like a small cameo by um, Kevin Bacon. Which was weird. Or just like, I was like, oh, yeah. Okay, cool. There he is. Um, <laughs> Michael McKean. Yeah. Um, the lawyer from Jurassic Park. Was in it at one point. That's everybody. Um, basically, it's synopsis. You we'll probably want that. We'll give you it. Uh, Chicago advertising man is interrupted by a ad popping up. Uh, <laughs> uh, so Chicago advertising man must struggle to travel home from New York for Thanksgiving with a lovable oaf of a shower curtain ring salesman as his only companion. I love how it says he must struggle. Yeah. <laughs> like he has to. Yep. And he did. Yes, he did struggle. Um let's start there then. What do you guys think was his biggest struggle on his this journey from New York to Chicago? Yeah, I think the getting obvious there. one. Well, I think the obvious one is not getting that ca- rental car. That's kind of mm-hmm. where he snapped. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. That For was his sure. breaking point. That was, yeah, that was the breaking point. That was, uh, yeah. <laughs> that was um, one of my favorite parts of the movie comes right after that, where he's talking to the receptionist the lady. lady who probably didn't deserve the what he did, no. but still, a no. very, very funny moment where the word fucking is like every other, you know, it's in every <laughs> sentence, every other word. And, <laughs> Yeah. And the the whole thing ends with him be with uh, her being like, "Well, you're fucked," because he threw away yes. the rental agreement or whatever. I don't. That was one thing. Like when he threw that away, I was like, "Why? Why would you do that? <laughs> you need. You're gonna need that." Anger has a funny way of making people stupid. 
I know, I know. <laughs> <sighs> but yeah, that that was definitely, I think, his lowest moment. Um, but also, like, I think the moment he finally um, came in a little endeared to Dell. That was his name, right? Dell. Yeah. Um, yeah. When Dell almost runs him over and then, you know, picks him up. Although he was still a little. I mean, when he found out that Dell had used his card um, to rent the car, uh, yeah, he got a little pissed there. But <laughs> can't blame him. Well, yeah, Dell didn't pick him up. The cab guy picked him up by the balls. Which mm-hmm. oh yeah, well yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. that had that like, stitches. Meant, like he was, came by. Yeah, I mean he hilarious. came by and was like. At first, like that scene got me because I was like, "Why does his voice sound different?" Like I actually had to think about it. I was like, "Oh wait." <laughs> that makes sense. And then I started yeah. laughing. I was like, wait, is my sound like messed up or something? <laughs> What's great freaking... is you can tell it was just like digitally altered. It wasn't even like Steve Martin doing a high pitched voice. <laughs> yeah. It's also right before that happens, like one of the best lines from the movie is um if I wanted a joke, I'd follow you to the John and watch you take a leak. <laughs> Which I mean <laughs> Say what you want about the movie. This is like one of the most quotable movies ever. Like yes. every, like almost every other line is golden. In this, mm-hmm. I feel. Yeah, I will say uh, that one, that line though. I was like, what does what does that even mean? Well, he's yeah, he's gonna see how small his his penis is. Oh, that's the joke. Because his penis it's, it is. is the, yep. All right, that is the joke. All right, Tay, Can raise you? your score up one star, please. <laughs> no, I don't think I, you know, I might have to drop it <laughs> for that. No, no. Um, yeah, as I mentioned, this was my first time seeing it. Mine too. Um, and I think it did suffer a little bit from just everybody hyping it up. Mm. Um, especially, like, I think the first half. Second half, I think. Yeah, I started to get into it a little more for sure. Um, but yeah, the whole scene in the the hotel was just like oh. uncomfortable. Yes. <laughs> so I mean, gross. yeah, um, just imagine, um, like just imagine yourself fun. being with a stranger in a hotel room. <laughs> and... Oh, for sure, it would be uncomfortable. I, I'll give him that. But yeah, it was a little. Cringe, as the young kids say. But it does lead to, like, one of my favorite scenes where they're, like, ending up cuddling or something like that. They yeah. wake up, and he's yeah. like, yeah. that is not a pillow! <laughs> yeah, that was pretty funny. A little a little homophobic uh, in this day and age, but still funny. I, I don't know I, if I, it was I, homophobic. I, I just feel like it's two, yeah. you know, strangers in Dream, a room together, yeah. and... Dell has his hand yeah, presumably guess. between Steve oh, Martin's he definitely cheeks. Definitely had it between the butt. Yes. <laughs> like I think that anyone would be uncomfortable in that moment, <laughs> exactly. whether you were were gay or not. You know. Yeah, yep. I guess. I guess. Stranger danger. But yeah, I, I yeah he you know Del, you know Steve Martin wakes up and Dell like kisses his ear and, and he's <laughs> yeah. like, "Did you just kiss my ear?" And he's like, "Why are you holding my hand?" <laughs> <laughs> I it's a, like it's a class. It's a classic scene. Yeah. I, I don't find it homophobic, uh, but I, yeah. I guess no. I didn't like. I don't know. Like I could just the way they react it, a little bit. I could see it. Um, but Ma- uh, yeah. maybe they have repressed feelings. They're like, oh, did maybe. I actually like that? <laughs> like, oh. Questioning their feelings. Like, oh, did I actually like that? The answer is no. Absolutely. Maybe. No. Well, maybe yes. Maybe. <laughs> That's why he went back for him at the train station in the end. They actually uh, adopted him as... Um, uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> the, the fifth kid. Or third, fourth kid. Yeah, because he had three children. Yeah. Um, and the, just the way the the wife... I mean, I guess we're jumping all over the place. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, we are kind of... <laughs> the wife at the end when she like... She likes, she's like, Mr. Griffin... <laughs> like I know all about you. You're our new son. That's yeah, like, I was just like, is a a choice in reading that. 
Yeah, I feel I feel like we should rewind back to the start when they first interact. Um, yeah. Del steals. Um, I need to yeah. learn his name. Neil. Neil's uh, no. taxi. And the reason why Neil didn't get to his taxi in the first place is because Dell's trunk uh, tripped mm-hmm. him. <laughs> yeah, I just thought that was the best setup ever because you see the trunk and you're like, oh, it's just a trunk. And then you know Dell's in the car and he does like the the pog face when <laughs> when Neil opens the door and yells. And then later on you see that oh it's Neil and then you also see that it's his trunk. I think that's a great payoff really because like, he, I mean the trunk is like just kind of like a. Um, a panned over thing. Like, it's not like a focal point. It's like, ah, th- there was a trunk there some for some reason. Then you realize, a little oh. bit of a focal point. Like, when I saw it, I was like, oh, okay, that's going to be John Candy's trunk. Because they, they focused on enough that I went, yeah, that, that's going to be important. Still a nice payoff, though. I, I, oh, for sure. Because yeah, I, mean, I, I, I guess this is my uh, second time watching it. Yeah. So I already knew that it was his trunk, but. Yeah. When I first watched it, like that was a nice little, like a nice little gag there. Like, yeah, <laughs> and of course the trunk lasts throughout the entire movie. So there's multiple <laughs> things that go on with that thing. Oh yeah, <laughs> for sure, for sure. Um, I think, you know, there was this the one thing that kind of bugged me. Like it, I it helped. Obviously, you needed it to happen. It made the movie happen. But it's like this whole big like sequence of oh no you're gonna miss your flight you're gonna you can't get a tap taxi you're you're gonna miss it and then like he gets there in time and then it's delayed so it's like well none of that mattered (laughs) yeah like i think it would have been better of a payoff if he had missed his flight and then there was no no other bookings anywhere and then also um then the storm hit in so or no, he maybe he get a later flight yeah they they had to have him leave new york and get stranded that's somewhere. true. Yeah, he had, he they, the the flight diverted all the way to Kansas. Yeah. So, but yeah, I think it would have been a little better if he had missed the flight because he couldn't get a cab. Um, and then it just turned out John Candy, you know, he was just on a later flight. Um, hmm. So they ended up on the same flight anyways, and then they get, you know, diverted to Wichita. I don't know. Just. It's not a huge thing, obviously, but either way, just, it works. Just the thought, yeah. It just it makes the taxi cab seem seem a little like okay. Well, why did any of it matter? Well, in, if that's the case, then uh, he made it home. So why did any of the movie matter? You know, <laughs> yeah. he should have died on the road. <laughs> no, I wanted to go that far. <laughs> it just it just was a little like oh well. You know, they were, they were just such a big setup, and then it was like, oh, well, it doesn't matter. Like, I don't know. Just everything, like, everything else after that, like, matters for, like, why he's being delayed from getting home, and it it, it works. That one had, like, well, that this didn't matter. I don't know. That's just my two cents. Yeah, I guess you gotta start somewhere. Yeah. Um, just, I, I guess yeah, it's just to show the unluckiness of him. Yeah, well, that's, that's true. Uh, the whole movie is just gets worse and worse luck, so... Yeah. You start with like the the easiest of of word of bad luck, which is like, oh, the flight was delayed, <laughs> which actually was kind of good luck. In if when you think about it, maybe that was his last piece of good luck for the rest of the movie. You know, <laughs> trying to think, what did he do to deserve such bad karma? You know, <laughs> what was leading up to well, that? He, he's in advertising, I guess. Oh yeah, there you go. You know, he make he's making girls, young girls, feel bad about their bodies in in the eighties just it's just not i was cool. gonna say impatience because he was impatient yeah. from the beginning of the movie yeah north korea also that yeah they, they start off with the him racing kevin bacon for the taxi um that kind of like it, it does a nice like the, the beginning of the movie does do a nice job of setting up neil's character and like you kind of know you kind of get his vibe by the time that he does start interacting with Dell, like especially after like that first flight where you know he's like I'm just trying to read and Dell's just like oh I hate it when people are blabbermouse and he just keeps you know he just keeps waffling on you know I hate it when people are blabbermouth too yeah me me awesome <laughs> no all right gr- greedy take him <laughs> 
I'm joking. Keep this. Keep this. You keep this. Uh, the whole operation running smoothly. What would have been your guys' uh, breaking point? Because <laughs> I feel like he went a lot further than I would have. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hotel, for sure. Hotel. Second, the second I get to the hotel and Dell's like, um, you can pay. <laughs> I'd be like, I'm I'm sorry, what? <laughs> yeah, I, I think the moment that the bathroom is wrecked and mm -hmm. yeah, um, there's only one bed, I'd be like, well, I guess I'll just... You know, because you, back in like, uh, what was it, like high school or something like that, when... You know, when we would go on school trips. Um, you know, there was always be one person who's like, "I'm gonna sleep in the chair." And they'd pull up with the two chairs and put them together and sleep on them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's that's what I would have done. It doesn't matter how uncomfortable it would have been. Would have stayed in the room. I get. Well, maybe I would have snuck out when he started snoring, but I would have stayed What's in the room. The classic uh, floor. I Ew. mean, I, I mean. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I mean, I wouldn't, you know, if I was like, you know, in high school, I would I would sleep on the floor. But, you know, I'm putting myself in Neil's shoes and he's like, what, 30 or something in the movie? Like, I'm, yeah. I'm like, I'm 30 mm -hmm. now, almost 31. I'm like, yeah, I, I could if I lay on the floor for too long, my back hurts. <laughs> like, if I Neil's lay wrong on my at. pillow, I'm done for yeah. the, yeah. the week. <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, I can lay on the floor for a while, but, like, if I did, like, an all-nighter in, like, a sleeping bag, like, Green and I used to do when we were kids, like, nope, wouldn't work anymore. Like, I would I would wake up, and I would be like, oh. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to your 30s. <laughs> we're, we, I've arrived. Mm -hmm. I was saying, I'm, right I almost, I'm, I'm about to leave my 30s. Oh. <sighs> But that's when the oh, true man. adventure begins. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yes, of course. But, yeah. Closer to retirement, right? <laughs> I am already basically <laughs> retired. <laughs> ah, perfect. No. Yeah, I think I think I think by the time most people get to that hotel, it's it's over. You know, like missing your flight yeah. or where you having your flight be, uh, you know. Uh, um, canceled and then having then having no hotels, no taxis. You know, I think that I think that already sets pe most would set most people off into a spiral. But I think as soon as you get to that hotel and you're dealing with <laughs> Dell, it's uh, yeah that that'd be most people's I think breaking point. Maybe even before that, maybe just having the flight canceled or just be you know diverted to Kansas would would be their breaking yeah. point. <laughs> I wouldn't be happy to be diverted to Kansas the day before thing or two days before Thanksgiving. Yeah, it also seems pretty far out of the way for Illinois because they're just going to Chicago. Do you think if they were yeah. diverted, they would be like, I don't know, <laughs> maybe the snowstorm is that is that bad that they have to divert all the way to Kansas? Right? I don't know. I mean, St. Louis is closer. You know, he ends up in St. Louis later. Why wouldn't they go there? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> It's back at what? This was the eighties. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Maybe they, I don't know. <laughs> something eighties, something, something. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> yeah. Now I even pulled up a map during this because I'm not super familiar with your area of the country. So I was like, wait, how far is St. Louis to Chicago? And I looked up. I was like, oh, it's maybe like a two-hour drive, maybe. <laughs> I guess they said in the movie three, so. Yeah. Yeah, it's about it's about three hours when your car burns to the ground, you know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which does lead me to, um, one of my favorite. I mean, I would say this is one of my favorite scenes in any comedy, is when they're driving the wrong way and the people are trying to warn them. And mm -hmm. Dell's like, how, how do they know where we're? Or maybe it's Neil who says, like, how do they? Yeah. Well, we're going the wrong way. Oh, how do they yeah, know where we're going? How do they <laughs> and then the two trucks are in front of them, and they squeeze between the two trucks, and like obviously life flashes before their eyes. They they get pictured as skeletons for a second, and then one of the funniest fucking things I've ever seen is John Candy dressed up as Satan, <laughs> maniacally laughing, <laughs> and it's like the best fucking thing. I have ever seen in my goddamn life. Look, like, that is worth like three stars together for that one single moment where 
Like Neil looks over and it's just John Candy laughing maniacally, dressed as Satan. It's the it's my favorite fucking thing ever. <laughs> like, it is so fucking good. So random too. Was not expected. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> but it was perfect. Brilliant, really. I mean, brilliant. Mm-hmm. Like, oh my gosh. But yeah, that that whole sequence with the car is like, I think that's kind of like what lifts this movie up in, in general. Like if you're just, if these, if like, if it, this is like a, if it, <laughs> okay, I'm trying to get my thoughts in order here. <laughs> I think the movie is great on its own, but that sequence from the time that they like get into that car and they're going upon the highway and all the like, you know, Dell's like arms are getting, or his coat's getting stuck on the seat. And then, you know, they almost mm-hmm. like careen off the freeway and, and, you know, and whatever. And Neil just like is oblivious to it all. And then they're driving the wrong way, and then the people are trying to tell them the wrong way. Then they go through the trucks, and the scene that I talked about happens. And then after that, the car catches on fire because Dell threw a cigarette into the back seat. And mm-hmm. then you know they're laughing with each other. And then they go through the whole like, "Oh, you stole my credit card," blah blah blah. And it ends with the gut punch on Dell. But the real gut punch is when uh, John Candy's like, "That's how Houdini died." <laughs> it's like <laughs> that's like <laughs> it's the perfect punchline to end it because. Houdini died when he got slugged in the gut. He had like pancreatic, his pancreas exploded or something like that. It's just, it's just, it's like the, it's like the perfect sequence in any comedy that I've ever seen. And that's what really <laughs> elevates this one above yeah. most comedies. Like most I, comedies I would give, like comedies that I like, I would give four stars. But this one is elevated so much because of the whole sequence. I didn't know when he said that. I was like, is that even true? Yeah, it is. I didn't know. It is. Yeah. Yep, that's 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 some random trivia I picked up a long time ago, and it finally paid off the no. Then <laughs> that's how Tudini died because he was doing like some trick or something like that. I thought it was the like he ended up drowning himself or something. No, yeah, I'm, well, he was punched in the stomach, and then he was doing like a magic trick, and I think that when they did the autopsy, they were like, "Oh, his pancreas exploded from the punch." <laughs> like, that's crazy. Yeah, it's absolutely crazy. And then there's, you know, UFC fighters out there. <laughs> they're taking punches to the stomach all the time. Yeah. <laughs> well, they're trained. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. Also, a lot of I'll, them I'll, are yeah, I think, a lot of internal injuries and, you know. Well, yeah. I think Houdini was already sick. Like, I think he already had, like, the pink, like, a infection in his pancreas or whatever. Whatever burst on him when he got punched. He already had, like, an infection. Uh. So he was sick. And the punch is what kind of, like, you know broke the camel's made, back made it know? worse yeah. <laughs> yeah that's what really got you know. although he probably i mean back at back in those times he probably would have died from the pancreas infection too so they just kind of right sped that sped up, up, up the process <laughs> yeah. yeah but yeah that was definitely like the peak i don't want to say the peak but like definitely uh you know this was like the hey that movie's ending soon <laughs> so here's all it's like the you know the ending action scene scene in like a war movie or something like that you know it's like everything is happening but it was so well placed and so well just like seen i guess like just you know back to back like that and it was so like it felt so smooth like like that throughout the whole time too but yeah i agree that that was definitely definitely a good sequence of events yeah i mean i would agree that's that's kind of like where the movie peaks and then it kind of has to come back down a little bit i mean because there's still a fairly big chunk of movie left after they have to go to the they go to the 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 drive-in yeah and neil gives the guy his watch and then um dell is like trying to give him two dollars in like a a digital watch that's like worth nothing you know and i love how he like puts it along his arm like he's trying to sell it to him you know it's just like a john candy's perfect like perfect in this movie i mean also steve martin is too but like yeah, I kind of lost my train of thought there, but like, you know, the peak of the movie, I do agree, is is that whole sequence right there, and then it kind of it's it stays. I mean, you know, if like the peak is the tip, I mean, it, it still stays pretty high. Like it's it maybe it slopes down a little bit towards the end, but it's still pretty high. I, I still, I mean, I was laughing throughout the entire movie, and that just that just goes to the writing and to the, you know, to John Candy and Steve Martin's performance performances. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Rest in peace, John Candy. Rest in peace, yeah, buddy. Rest in peace. Yeah. 
I do like um, there was the one part where they're drinking in the hotel room, and John Candy says something that was like, "Oh, he predicted his future in Cool Runnings." He's like, "I'm going to Jamaica." <laughs> <laughs> You will be going That's to Jamaica, true. buddy. It's great. I love the randomness of his job title, too. Like, who came up with that? A shower ring salesman? Like, yeah. that is so random. Yeah, it's a great it's a great scene, too, where he's selling the shower rings to, like, random people, and he's describing <laughs> them to be different things. Mm-hmm. Uh, that really so shows his, his character and, like, how... Um, how smart he actually is because throughout the movie you're kind of thinking like oh this guy's like a dunce or whatever like you mm-hmm. know, but no he's actually really smart you know he's he's just kind of he's just a very happy go lucky guy you know yeah I do think it's funny. you see the girls put them in I'm like that had to hurt they would have to have gauges to get those things <laughs> exactly. in their ears I was thinking the same thing they were huge yeah I was like my ears are pierced and I couldn't fit those in <laughs> I mean, he is pretty much the reason why uh, Steve Martin was able to get back to Chicago. Oh, yeah, he's 100% the reason why. I mean, just selling those rings in the first place got them that first part of the of the, um, of the the journey with the... Because he bought the bus t- tickets, right? With the with the money from the, from the I rings, so. I think? I think so. Yeah. Or maybe he bought... bought on a nice tree. meal, too. Yeah, he bought the bus tickets, and then... Neil bought the train tickets with John Candy's credit card or whatever. Um, and then he saves them with the car that eventually burns, bursts in flames. But yeah, well, that one Neil bought. <laughs> Neil bought that car. <laughs> yeah. Well, wait, no, n- Neil, Neil didn't know he bought. No, it. no, yeah, Neil technically bought it because <laughs> John Candy used his uh, credit card. Oh yeah, yeah, okay. I about to say, I was like, no, he didn't get it. Yeah, you, you kind of are wondering throughout the movie like when that's gonna like actually um, have some yeah, importance. Yeah, that happened in the first hotel where he switched their cards, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. Steve Martin like takes the wrong card because the guy who's like doing the card stuff puts it in a weird spot. <laughs> like he takes yeah. John Candy's card and he puts it right back in place, and he like holds on to Steve Martin's card for some reason. <laughs> it's like you're just asking for trouble there. <laughs> Um, hey, what about the name of the movie? Planes, trains, and automobiles. Uh, they started on a plane, but then they went to an automobile. So technically, actually, technically, the movie starts with him in a in a Steve Martin in a in a automobile. So technically, this yeah. is this the title's a lie. The title <laughs> is a lie. But it's not, it doesn't make sense if it's automobile. Uh, train, train, uh, plane, plane, train, no, plane, train, <laughs> automobile, automobile. Imagine, no, it should be automobile, plane, train. Actually, it should be automobile, the automobile, so. automobile, plane, automobile, <laughs> automobile, train, automobile, <laughs> automobile, <laughs> truck. Get for the truck. Psychotic break. Yeah. <laughs> I actually, I actually like the name of the movie Plane Strains, and it rolls off the tongue very easily. That's mm-hmm. probably why they put it like that. Yeah. I used to have a book when I was well, when I was younger. It was my great great granddad's, and it was called Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. But it wasn't this. It wasn't like this in a book. It was actually a book about different types of models of planes, trains, and automobiles. Ah. Yeah. Maybe that's where they got the name from, too. Maybe. They're like, this makes sense. <laughs> yeah. So how do you all feel about their relationship by the end of the movie? Do you think it works? Do you think uh, they, it was forced? Uh, what, what do you got? I think it makes sense. Um, you know, they're kind of both annoyed with each other, but knew that they couldn't do it without each other at the same time. Mm-hmm. And then at the end, he says, I feel like Steve or Neil uh, was like, whatever, at this point. Yeah, he yeah. He's, he started to piece together um, what had happened to Dell's wife, just from the little hints that, or, yeah, hints that he, that was thrown out there. Um, and I think at that point mm-hmm. he realized, like, oh, he he's just kind of, like, 
the whole reason why he came on this trip with me is because he just kind of doesn't have anywhere to go, right? Yeah, he doesn't mm-hmm. have anybody. He, he was already go like he had a plane ticket to Chicago. So it's like, what was his plan when he got there? Just Probably keep just going. to be a salesman. Like, yeah, sell, sell, it's a big city. Sell his shower rings and move to the next place, yeah. Yeah. Maybe. I really liked it. I really liked their dynamic at the end because, yeah. like, the whole point of Steve Martin wanting, you know, to get there is to be with his family and just to go home. Like, that's all he wanted in the entire world is to go home and be with his family. And part mm-hmm. of me wonders if he put it into his own perspective, like what if I had nowhere to go for this, you know, Thanksgiving holiday? Like, what if I didn't have my family to look forward to, to go home? And, like, being on that huge trip, I think, made him a little softy. And <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I think, I think it was a really good ending. Yeah, no, it was, it was a good ending. It was a good happy ending. Yeah, yeah. It, it was like good character growth and a good ending. Like you don't usually get both of those, <laughs> right? Especially in a comedy. Like you know, a lot of times, like the yeah. in a in a comedy, it'll be so fast paced that like the two characters, you don't feel like they've really bo- should have bonded as much as they did, right? And then, mm-hmm. but this one, they've been through so much stuff together, and they had the emotional moments, they had the fun moments, um. They had the anger moments, and it, it all just it all worked out at the end. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like how like they're constantly at each other's throat, and then like almost immediately, like, ah, all right, we'll find, we'll be friends. <laughs> yeah, well, I think um, you know that sh- like the change in that sh- is a good like segue in when uh, Dell is you know kind of freezing out in the car while Neil's in the hotel or in the motel, and he, I think that's like the where he changed hearts and that's where neil was kind of yeah. like okay that wasn't I, even the first time though because like technically in the first motel when they got in this like arguing match and he and neil's telling dell off about all his problems um you know he turns to leave and then goes like ah, fine i maybe i went too far final stay well i, I mean i think that dell you know like, cause, cause Neil goes off on all this stuff, and and Dell has a very um, poetic, I guess, statement yeah. to say to him, and I think that it actually hit him. He was like, "Wow, maybe, mm-hmm. yeah, maybe I am just being like a, a bitch, a bastard, you know?" Like, <laughs> um, because Neil goes through all this stuff, talking about all you know, every single reason why Dell is is uh, you know, or yeah, why Dell is like such a bad, you know, such a bad person to be around or annoying person to be around, and. He really focuses on like the talking and whatever, and um, I think Dell has a really great, you know, first line where he's like, "Hey, I'm an easy target. Yeah, I talk too much, whatever. Like, but at least I'm not like a cynic. At least I'm not like a a, a fucking asshole, right? You know? Yeah, yeah. And I think that's where Neil goes. Okay, I, I think, I think that was kind of like his coming down to earth moment, I guess. Even though he needs yeah. to come back down several times in the movie, but I think that was like the first time in his and maybe in his life that someone had talked to him like that after a, his hit one of his spats, you know. Mm-hmm. Which is all just inferred, but you know, I, I think it, I think it makes <laughs> sense. I do too. Yeah, maybe, maybe next time he won't uh, try to race Kevin Bacon for a taxi. Maybe next time he, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Maybe next time he'll be okay with someone taking his cab. Well, maybe not okay with taking his cab after paying the guy like 70 bucks or whatever, but still, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> maybe, that would have been maybe, a maybe he won't try to pay someone off for their taxi next time, you know. I don't know. <laughs> it's New York. There's always another taxi. Mm-hmm. Yeah, imagine if, like, Uber or something was around during this movie, you know? Like, how much easier... It would have been, yeah. I guess. <laughs> That's what I was thinking too. I was like, "Man, you could, I don't know. If, I mean, they did remake this movie in like what 2013, 14, somewhere did they? around there. Did they? Yeah, with um, um, uh, Iron Man, and I can't remember who the other, was it. Jack Black. I can't remember, uh, but yeah, they did remake it. Uh, it says Kevin Hart here, but that's this is 2023. That can't be right. 
I think and I don't think they called it planes, trains, automobiles, but like it was the exact same story. Kevin Hart and Will Smith to remake planes, trains, and automobiles. This was back in 2023. Oh, here, here's one: Adam Sandler and Drew, someone I guess his wife wants to remake it too. <laughs> like, oh, there's God. so many people want to re. I don't, I don't see anything about. I I can't see anything about like a remake of the like. From... Yeah, it, like I said, it wasn't exactly a remake, but like it had almost the exact same premise. <laughs> um, Was it called Due Date? Maybe. Robert Downey Jr. and Zach Galifianakis? That's, that, I think that was it. He intends to fl- catch a flight home to Atlanta so he can be there for the delivery, and he has a chance encounter with an aspiring actor who throws a monkey wrench into his plans despite to desperate to reach his wife before the baby is born. His sandy is tested. He must team up with whatever this guy's name is, Ethan Tremblay. <laughs> that must be it. That must be like the remake. Hmm. That is definitely it. Um, They are still trying to write this with Will Smith and Kevin Hart, though. Like, they're still writing it. Do you think there'll be a slap scene where he slaps Kevin Hart? Oh, my God. Mm. I hope so. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. But, yeah. Like, I remember when Due Date was announced, I was, like, looking. I was, like, is this just the remake of Planes, Trains, Automobiles? (laughs) (laughs) And, like, it's very similar premise and everything. Deja vu. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, maybe I'll check that out one day. But yeah, no matter. You know, a lot of times, there's really no reason to remake a movie like this. And I, yeah, I, I mean, agreed. I, I mean, yeah, sure, you could update it and be like, oh, what about Uber? What about blah 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 blah? I think that the, I don't know. I, I think that this movie has like it's a nice little piece of history. Almost, it's like a nice yeah. period piece too. Well, <laughs> yeah. this type, yeah, this is the type of movie where it's like, no, we don't. Don't do an update. Like we, yeah, we need it. Like the story only works in the context of the '80s and maybe '90s, but it wouldn't work nowadays because there are things like Uber, cell phones. You could constantly be talking to your wife to be like, "Hey, here's what's going on." Yeah, yeah they can literally track you. Like, yeah, <laughs> they can. They have the, you know, they have your flight information on their phone and be like, "Oh, well, mm-hmm. you're delayed." <laughs> Yeah, and I guess the first thing that would have to happen is both of them, both of them would conveniently have to lose their phone or run out of battery or get them broken or something like that, and then mm-hmm. yeah. they would not have the bright idea to, I don't know, go to a library and borrow a computer, <laughs> or I don't know, like go yeah. to a coffee shop, or like go literally to- ask <laughs> anybody. <laughs> it wouldn't work if set in the modern time. Right. Does anyone have one of those big giant phones that give you radiation that I could call my wife on? <laughs> <laughs> I have I have a briefcase phone. <laughs> Holy shit, he's J- James Bond. <laughs> yeah, he's like, why is there a gun in here too? <laughs> um. Well, I think I've talked about everything I want to talk about. Yeah, I think so as well. Yeah. Take okay. anything. Thanks. You're good. All right. You know what to do. Well, as I said, this was my first time sorry, watching the movie. Um, and it did suffer a little bit from being hyped up for, and because, you know, I've had friends and family people talk about this movie for years at this point because it's been out for basically my whole life um and there was definitely some funny moments like stuff i had forgotten that people had talked about they're like oh there's this quotable line like the 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 whole hand in the pillows thing like second that when i was like oh yeah i remember my cousin telling me about this like forever ago um but so i did suffer a little from the hype up because like i said just I was like, oh, I was expecting more. Um, but by the second half of the movie, I really was like invested, um, especially yeah, once they got the rental car and everything. That's when the movie really picks up. And, um, you know, I had a good time watching it. I don't know if I would necessarily go out of my way to watch it again ever. But, um, you know, great acting and all that. Um, fun story. Overall, yeah, I'd probably give it a 3.5 out of 5. 
know, it might not be as, as high as the rest of you, but... I loved Eight. it. It was great. Um, I don't really know what to say. <laughs> I'm kind of out of it, but um, I thought the comedy it was great. Um, acting, absolutely amazing. Even by the chick at the desk, you know, the get fucked lady. She was great. I'm pretty sure she was the same person that was in Office Space that mentioned, like, having the case of the Mondays. I don't know if y'all... She wasn't Ferris Bueller's day off, I know. Okay. If that helps at all, but... Nope. <laughs> But I like I I now that you say that I'm like yeah she was but um anyway great great scene great movie I freaking love it I love that it's only an hour and a half that was like perfect 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 um but uh my my rating is going to be a four point nine all right four point nine four point nine wow mm-hmm. I think that's our first not a point five. <laughs> You're welcome. Ray's sneaky like that. She did that. She did that before. We we forced her to change her number. <laughs> this time we'll be lenient. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna I'm just gonna say right now. Uh, believe the hype. This movie is as good as people say. Uh, this is uh, probably like one of my favorite comedies and like. I, I know I, I talked highly of, of of Kung Pao and I still gave that like a four um, because, you know, the, you know there, there's other factors that go into it. But Plain Strains and Automobiles is like one of those like comedies that <clears throat> I've only like seen it a couple times now. But it's one of those ones that like I th I can remember a lot from it and I still laugh at everything. And <laughs> I think the entire movie has a great flow to it. I think that the comedy is is written pretty well, almost perfectly. I it has one of my favorite scenes in any comedy movie ever, which is definitely going to give it some brownie points, you know? Um, and I think that, yeah, I think that this is like one of uh, John Candy's best performances next to Barf from Spaceballs. And I think Steve Martin is really great in this movie. Like, I'm not a huge Steve Martin fan. Like, I, I, I'm okay. Like, I think the jerk is okay. And I mean, cheaper by the dozen is, you know, whatever, but. Um, like this is like I think this is like he really sh shines here. Um, I think the cinematography is also pretty pretty nice. I, I thought there was a lot of great film s scenes. So it's like you know a lot of comedies they'll kind of skimp on one part of it, whether it be the music or the the, the cinematography or whatever. And the, I think this movie really just kind of had it all. And I don't usually give comedies perfect scores, but this one definitely is like this one definitely is a five out of five. I think it's I think it's great. I. I, I, I'm I'm one of those people hyping it up, so <laughs> sue me. <laughs> mm -hmm. No, that's fine. Um, <clears throat> I I had a good time with it. Uh, I laughed throughout. Uh, great uh, pace of the movie. Um, great, uh, good acting. Um, John Candy was a national treasure in this. Uh, I loved the story too. Like I felt like the story, like it had purpose and wasn't just a slap comedy of you know. No real story to it, nothing going on, just, you know, punchline here and there. Uh, so, like most comedies are today. Um, I felt like this one had a purpose, and while being funny at the same time, and, like, dealing with, you know, like, some people's everyday struggles. Maybe, you know, some extreme, a little too extreme, but, you know, um, stuff like that could happen to people. And, could, you know, it showed, like, uh, good emotion throughout the movie as well. Um, I had a good time with it. Uh, I felt like it was well paced. Like I said, uh, I'm gonna give it a four point five out of five. All right, we got one oddball here. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> like I enjoyed it. Don't get me wrong, but I don't know the way. In fact, you said never watch it again. Huh. That kind of hurts me, Tay. Yeah. But yeah. it's all right. It's like I said, right. I mean, I, it's not that I wouldn't ever watch it again, as I wouldn't go out of my way to watch it again. If it was like on TV or something, sure, I'll watch it. But uh, watching this with commercials would ruin the jokes. So they would, like, yeah. they would like start mm -hmm. to like, they would start to black out when like after he like d uh, Dell gets punched or something like that, and you miss like the yeah. last line, you know. <laughs> That'd be awful. 
Well, yeah, I'm talking about like, you know, cable without commercials or something. And I feel like everything would be like blurred out, not blurred out, but like they would have like Oh, beeps. yeah, you wouldn't even get to see his big scene. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. Like during the scene where he's like telling the rental car lady off, it would just be like, "You get your beeping uh, face out of my <laughs> beeping and you give me a beeping car and you beep." Him. Or what it'll they... just change into freaking and yeah. it'll look terrible. Yeah. <laughs> What what's the Die Hard one? Um, something something Mr. Falcon or something like that. <laughs> like instead of Yippie Ki Yay, motherfucker. Mr. <laughs> <laughs> uh, before Ray gives us her recommendation for this next episode, I'm mm-hmm. gonna go ahead and remind you all about the fan vote happening right now in the Discord. If you're listening to this, the weekend of release, we got four movies lined up. Alien, The Irishman, Kung Fu Panda, and Pitch Black. A pretty diverse lineup, if I do say so myself. Uh, So make sure you head over to Discord and check that out. And if Callus is listening to this, you never sent me an email with your recommendation in it. So um, I'm waiting. (laughs) Disappointed. Did he message you or anything? No. Did he just straight up forget? He's radio silent on the recommendation for Film Freaks. Callus. All right, now that's out of the way. Ray has a recommendation for us. What you got? I do. Um, okay, so I made sure to look before I chose this, and I'm shocked that this has not been chosen yet. Also excited. Um, but my choice is Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. Oh, All right. yeah. From 1989. Um, two rock and roll teens on the verge of failing their class set out on a quest to make the ultimate school history report after being presented with a time machine. Uh, director Stephen Herrick, writers Chris Matheson, Ed Solomon, uh, stars Keanu Reeves, Alex Winter, and George Carlin. Um, this can be found on HBO Max. So, I love this movie. This movie holds a very special place in my heart. So, nice. I'm excited. I love this movie. But it's been forever since I've seen it. Hopefully it holds up. Yeah. I'm hoping so, too. (laughs) I have it on my watch list. It'll be a first watch for me. It'll be a first watch for me, too. I think I've seen, like, snippets of this movie, but, like, I haven't watched the whole thing in one go. It's precious. I I remember, like, Abraham Lincoln and Julius Caesar or something like that. Like, it's very fuzzy, but... (laughs) (laughs) Maybe you'll just have to watch it. That's right. That's right. Leave us on a tease. Mm-hmm. And if you, the listener, do not want to be spoiled, or if you want to join the conversation for Bill and Ted's excellent adventure, uh, make sure you watch that before the next episode airs in two weeks. We'll reconvene and talk about it. All right. It's the end of the podcast. Does anyone have any small recommendations? We just had the Oscars. Are there any Oscar movies, Oscar winning movies that you all want to recommend? No, I was going to recommend. Um... Go go support your local theater. You know, look online. There's probably some fun things going on. Comedy shows, plays, musicals, improv. Go go support those. Well, all right. <laughs> I don't think any around here, but all right. There probably is. You'd probably be surprised. I might be surprised. Yeah. My small recommendation from the Oscars is to check out... Um, Barbie, which was, yeah, you know, it wasn't like snubbed necessarily, but I do feel like it kind of deserved the, you know, one of the, the you know, one of the awards, like, um, I, it need it deserved to at least be nominated for like best movie of the year. Right. I had a lot of mm-hmm. fun with it. I thought it was excellent. I thought the music was like fantastic. Like so I didn't good. go into it knowing that it was going to be so musical. And I was like, wow, this stuff <laughs> This stuff bops, you know? So yeah. Barbie's definitely good. worth checking I out. Barbie. I think it is on HBO Max. So I checked that out. That was almost my movie recommendation. That was that was top for a minute. And then I saw <laughs> Bill and Ted's. <laughs> so. Um, I would be Godzilla minus one, I guess. Yeah. Pretty yeah. good movie. Definitely yeah. a good movie. Big win for special effects there. Yes. It should have won more. It should have won story. Yeah, unfortunately, it wasn't nominated, though. I know. Mm-hmm. I feel like if it was made in America, it might have been, but I don't know. Yeah, but I then it know. wouldn't have been as good, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, <laughs> got him. Got, wait, got us. Yeah, got, got us. us. <laughs> <laughs> We're awful. And making Godzilla movies, correct. 
Also, <laughs> I just want to say Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem kind of snubbed for uh, the animated oh, feature yeah. section because um, that was a really fun movie. Yeah, I, still need, I still need to see that one. I haven't seen it yet. Really nice visual dis- like this style. Yeah. Um, not as good as Puss in Boots The Last Wish, but still a really nice time. They need, to, really they need to, if they're going to, they need to like, what's the word? Like, there's like a uh, animated movie should be able to win things like best picture and stuff because oh, like yeah. last best, time like, an it, animated it, movie was was nominated for best picture was Beauty and the Beast. <laughs> yeah. Wow. And like, well, like, and they can't even win. I don't like. I saw someone post about it. Like, they can't win like things like best score and stuff. Cause, yeah, it's it's ridiculous because um, Spider Man should have definitely been nominated for that. Like the yeah. across the Spider Verse. Right, and it's just like, come on, people. It's 2024. Animation is a legitimate art form. Well, hey, we can all be thankful that Five Nights at Freddy's and <laughs> Megan and oh my God. Um, Megan. insert any other bad movie from last year. Cocaine Bear were, were not nominated. <laughs> and, uh, Wasn't Megan 2022? Oh, maybe it was. I don't know. I hated it, though. So Regardless, it's <laughs> terrible. Yeah. I don't know. I don't watch most. Also... I'm going to be the one to say it. I'm glad the Mario Bros. movie didn't win. I, oh, I said yeah. it. I said it. No, I agree with you there. I, I, I never I, watched I, it. So I now that everyone who likes the Mario movie is angered, let's go ahead and end it here, folks. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, I am, like the movie, but I don't think nope, it's right, We're ending it. We're ending it. <laughs> I am Yumi the Ferret, and I've been here with... Greedy Waffles. Hey, Mation. Very positivity. And this has been Film Freaks with a Z. Thank you for listening. So long. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.